What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a first look overview plus on feet video of the brand new Puma 1 17.1 in the launch white, black and fiery coral colorway. So the Puma 1 is a shoe that when it was first unveiled, I was critical of because I didn't feel like it was the right move for Puma. In terms of the shoes that it replaces and the final product that the Puma 1 ended up being. And now that I have them in my hands, I have to say that I'm not overly impressed with the shoes. I'll explain why in this video. We'll go over all of the details, we'll go over the tech specs, we'll take a look at how they fit and feel on feet, and essentially cover everything that you need to know about the Puma 1 17.1. While I'm not overly impressed, I still, still think it is a solid shoe, so don't get that wrong right off the bat. Anyways, if you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen, or you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $200 retail price. Now included inside of the box with the shoes, is not a string bag, but an extra set of lightweight insoles, which instead of the standard synthetic suede liner you have on the ones inside the shoes, these have a mesh liner with some perforation. So are they actually that much lighter? No, but it's nice to get an extra set anyways. As far as the actual shoe itself goes, it's a much more simple design than I think a lot of people would anticipate. Obviously, they incorporated leather and they incorporated a mid-cut aspect to it with a knitted element as well in the form of this Evo knit material running through the middle and making up the mid-cut collar, which is kind of more along the lines of like Adidas Ace Height as opposed to the mid-cuts from Nike, if you were wondering at all. So, the leather upper, what exactly is it? I think a lot of people are under the impression that this is kangaroo leather and that is not actually the case. We don't know 100%, but if you read the press release from Puma, if you read what's listed as tech specs, some places do have it listed as calfskin leather, but nowhere, including Puma's own press release, listed, lists the, the leather as kangaroo leather, and that's something that they would definitely make sure to add in the tech specs if that was the case. That's generally a major selling point for a leather shoe. So the fact that this is technically not kangaroo leather is not a huge deal, but it's definitely noticeable when you hold the shoe in your hands that the quality, while it isn't bad by any means, it's still top end quality for a leather shoe. It's not what I was honestly expecting. I expected this to be a lot nicer, especially if this was gonna be a standalone flagship. One of the shoes that this replaces, obviously it replaces the Evo Speed line, but it also takes over for the Evo Touch line. And the leather on the Evo Touch Pro, not only was it kangaroo leather, not only was it a little bit thinner than this, I thought it was just better quality overall. So I really think that this is a little bit of a step backwards in the leather quality department when compared to the Evo Touch Pro, which like I said, is a shoe that this replaces. With that said, the quality is still pretty decent and it's got a little bit of a thicker feel to it, like I said, in comparison to the Evo Touch Pros. So the touch that you're gonna get on the ball is pretty straightforward, soft leather, slightly padded sensation, and a very natural sensation in general through the leather part of the upper, which is, I would say, the majority of the upper for the most part. The cutoff point is this seam right here, it goes through the forefoot, midfoot area, and then of course cuts off at this point right here, which again, I think is kind of an awkward seam. I wish they would have made that not just a straight up and down cut right in the middle of the midfoot on the medial side. I wish they would have looped it around or something like that, but that's how they chose to do it. It's not really a big deal. It's not super, super noticeable when the shoe is on your feet. So quality of leather is okay. There is a slight amount of grip text texturing there on the surface. It's really, really minimal, not super noticeable on the ball, and obviously very minimal stitching here as well. And given the, the, the structural integrity feel of this leather, Overstretching in the forefoot toe box area would be a concern for me over time, although the shoe just came out, so it's really difficult to judge it on that as of yet. But just something to keep in mind if you are planning on picking these up. The heel area is made from a synthetic material. It has a little bit of texturing to it, but it's mostly in the heel area, so it's not really gonna have an impact on the touch whatsoever. The lacing system, obviously those laces run through the middle, and there is some reinforcement elements through the lacing system, mainly these uh, nylon plastic straps that are in bright orange here. Two of them are on the lateral side, one of them is on the medial side, and they actually run through the upper into the base of the sole. So it's kind of like a flywire system from Nike, but it's just long nylon straps. And this is something that's not necessarily new from Puma. For those that remember back to 2014, the 2014 edition of the Puma King, which 
In my opinion, I think this should have been called a Puma King, not a Puma One. But anyways, this particular strap system was featured on the Puma uh, King 2014. And on that shoe, it was effective and it is effective on this shoe as well. These do have a good amount of structure and rigidity to them when you pull the laces tight. You can see actually they replace lace holes within the lacing system. So you're pulling directly on these straps that again, act as a kind of really reinforcement stabilization elements. But what I don't like about them is that if you really are one of those people that ties your laces super, super tight, it can put a lot of tension on these straps and it can end up causing pinch points and being just a little bit too stiff and slightly uncomfortable. So again, that's something to keep in mind. They add a lot of structure. They're very, very effective in terms of locking your foot in place and adding that responsiveness. But depending on how sensitive you are to firmer elements within the upper, that can be a little bit uncomfortable for you. And again, they're only in the midfoot. So my concern would mostly be the forefoot, given that it is a soft leather with pretty much no reinforcement there. But the lacing system, perfectly central as you can see. And the middle part where a tongue would normally be is filled in with their Evo knit material that flows into the collar area, which is really, really interesting. Obviously, mid-cut shoes are the trend right now. They did have something along the lines of a mid-cut boot with the Evo touches as well. So it's not a surprise that this ended up being a mid-cut model as well. And it's an elasticated knitted material. There's not a whole lot to talk about here. Uh, it is perforated though. So you notice that when it stretches out, you can actually see right through it. So it's not necessarily gonna be all that water resistant like a lot of these colors can end up being, but perforations throughout the entire thing. And it doesn't go all the way through like you'll find on the Evo Touch Pro as well. Basically, from the bottom of the seam right here where the actual lacing system starts, that's where the knitted material will end. And there are little cutoff points on the inside. I'll remove the laces and put a clip on screen so you can get a better idea of how much of the inside of the shoe is covered by this elasticated Evo knit material. But it is fully elasticated, so it's not really adding any structure. It's just kind of filling in the middle portion of the shoe. As far as the collar itself is concerned, the shoe is pretty much low cut if you kind of just fold it in the collar. That's essentially what it would look like, as you guys can see. But there's a little extended piece. It's elasticated. There's no structure. You don't really feel it when you're wearing the shoes. It's there more so just for the look than anything. But a lot of people like mid-cut stuff. They like the way that it looks. So it's not surprising that they did this. And it's not something that I really have an issue with in all honesty. I actually like having the middle filled in with an elasticated knitted material. Uh, the heel counter, as you guys can see, fully internal. Obviously a hard plastic material. So nothing out of the ordinary there. It's got a little bit of a pull tab, which I don't mind as well. I actually kind of like how that looks. But the inside, this is where things get a little bit interesting because I'm not too crazy about the liner. The liner is fully made from this Evo knit material. So it kind of just seamlessly transitions from the collar into the liner. It's all smooth on there, except for the giant stitch going across the back, which again, it doesn't feel like a rough stitching or anything like that, but there's pretty much no extra padding in this heel liner area. It's pretty much just right against that internal heel counter. And that's something that I found to be a little bit uncomfortable when I first put these on. So I'm really curious to see how that's gonna end up feeling once you start running around and trying to break these things in. Cause that's the one thing about this shoe that when I put them on, I really wasn't all that crazy about. They just, I, w I really wish they would have put some kind of padding there in the heel area. I just find that to be a lot more comfortable. And I think most people would agree with me in that particular aspect of the shoe. The insole fully removable, I'll give you guys a quick look at that. Again, they give you the extra sit, uh, set like I showed you uh, in the start of the video. But uh, basically a synthetic suede liner on top, as you guys can see. Um, really, really nice synthetic suede actually. And it's just a single layer of this red foam that actually does have some decent thickness to it. So overall, it's a pretty decently nice insole. No issues with it whatsoever. Slide that back in really quickly. Oh, it's fighting me. Come on. Oh, there we go. Anyways, the outsole, this is made from a PBAX material. So this is again, kind of more, I guess the upper with the, with the leather and the Evo knit is more along the lines of what we got from the Evo touch. Whereas the sole plate and stud pattern is more along the lines of the Evo speed. So the Puma one kind of incorporates those two shoes into one now if you really wanna say that's the case. But uh, like I said, this is more Evo speed as opposed to Evo touch in my opinion. But it's a PBAX material and it's not overly flexible. It still has some rigidity to it, but it doesn't feel super stiff either. So I really have no issues with that. It feels quite good. And Puma generally tends to do a pretty good job with these PBAX outsoles. It definitely feels a lot more solid than what we got from 
say the SL Evo Speed models, which were super, super thin and kind of flimsy. This feels really good though. And the sub pattern, probably my personal favorite aspect of this particular model. It is kind of a reworked design where you have bladed studs at the heel, you have conical studs here through the forefoot area, and then some bladed studs at the tip of the toe, and then an interesting positioning for the middle support stud. There's actually two of them side by side in kind of an interesting formation there, but uh, really, really curious to try this out. I like the fact that these are conical, and Puma generally does, tends to do a pretty good job with their stud patterns. If, if, if you're asking me to rank brands by their stud patterns, I think that Nike probably would be the number one brand in terms of offering really good traction and really good variety from line to line. But second place I think would definitely be Puma. So I really like this layout. It reminds me a little bit of the Evo power line. It's a little bit from the Evo speeds. It's interesting and I, I like the way that it looks. I like the way that it feels thus far. And I'm excited to get more time in these because of the stud pattern. So that's pretty much it in terms of an overview of the shoe. The only other performance characteristic to talk about is the weight, which in a size nine US, these guys weigh in at, sorry, not a nine US, in a size 9.5 US, these guys weigh in at 7.4 ounces, which is decently lightweight. It's very similar to that of the Evo Touch Pros. Obviously not as light as some of the Evo Speed models, but in the seven, 7.4, 7.5 ounce range, it's in the same ballpark as a lot of top end models right now. So they definitely don't have a heavy feel on your feet. They're not exceptionally light either, but they are about averaged on the lighter side of things for most top end models out there. So again, I think as long as you're not looking for something that's super, super light, you're not gonna have any issues with the weight of the Puma 1 17.1, which I don't know why they incorporated the 17.1. It's kind of like what Adidas is doing now, but that's what they chose to do. But uh, anyways, that's it about the tech specs. Let's talk a little bit about the look of the shoe because I guess everyone's gonna have their own opinion. I don't care for the form stripe being positioned further back. I like it when it's up here, kind of the normal for forward uh, forefoot area, but uh, this to me looks a little bit strange. This has a really cool kind of multicolor Kind of look to it which is definitely interesting you have that in the puma logo right there on the medial side as well obviously this is a white upper with black accents and then fiery coral is this orange color that you see and it looks very orange in the knitted aspect of the upper but on the sole plate and this is something that was really surprising to me in person it's more of a pink than it is an orange and i guess on camera it may look more orange but uh this is definitely pink in person and this is definitely orange in person so uh, a little bit of a mismatch in terms of the colors on the shoe, which again, I think is a little bit disappointing, but overall I don't mind the colorway. It's just the form stripe to me that still looks a little bit goofy. I don't, I don't love the look of the shoe in general. And again, the mid cut aspect, some people like that. I, I just think that it would have looked better if they just kept it a low cut shoe like that. I think that looks pretty clean, but everyone has their own opinion. I'll leave a little poll on screen pop up. You can vote. Do you like the look of the Puma one? yes or no i'd be really really curious to hear your opinions that's enough about tech specs so let's take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet so you can see on the right shoe i actually swapped out the white laces for some black reflective sr4u replacement laces which i love to look cool and at least different on this particular shoe just because it matches the black and i guess orange to a certain extent that you have through the middle of the the, the lacing system here because of the Evo knit material. So if you are interested in a pair of laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. So putting them on pretty straightforward, it's really easy to get on. But as you guys can see, as soon as I start tying them up, they made the sides of the shoe really, really shallow. It's not necessarily a narrow fit, but when the sides of the shoe don't aren't very tall, they didn't add a lot of material as far as the leather is concerned, you end up with the middle part being very wide open. This is kind of a common thing on the current Evo powers as well. So it's just kind of a design choice, but just keep that in mind. It's not a super narrow shoe, despite how it might look on feet. And as far as being able to tuck the laces in, I guess technically you have some space there. I'm not going to do it. But uh, for the most part, there's not a whole lot of area to tuck the laces in because of the mid cut design. So throw the other shoe on as well, just so you can get a look at both of them on feet. There it goes. So again, with the collar, you kind of have to just adjust it there because it will kind of, there's not a lot of structure to it, so it'll just kind of wrinkle in on itself. Pull that up like that. 
And then from there, just tie the laces. And again, you'll immediately notice when you put these on and tie the laces tight, that once you get to the parts with these straps, if you really pull on them hard, you definitely notice the strap all the way up and down, just squeezing your foot and really doing a good job of securing it in place. But again, depending on how sensitive you are to that kind of thing, it could be uncomfortable for you. So just bear that in mind if that's something that you've had issues with on other shoes. But here's a look at the shoes on feet. And again, when you put them on, the first thing that I noticed was that heel liner and the lack of padding there. Uh, the heel liner grips your socks pretty nicely, so there's no issues with slippage, but it does feel a lot firmer than I was honestly expecting and just not quite as comfortable out of the box as the rest of the shoe feels on your foot. The leather at the front is very soft, it's flexible, it feels really nat natural. Uh, the midfoot area, because of those straps, definitely does have more of a reinforced kind of uh, stiffer feel to it. So I'm personally not too crazy about that. I like when a reinforcement element does its job, but doesn't necessarily add stiffness to the feel of the upper, which I can't say that this necessarily does, but it is serving its purpose for sure. There's no doubt about that. Um, and the actual mid cut aspect, again, it doesn't really feel all that noticeable. It's so thin, it's so stretchy. There's pretty much no structure to this. It's really, really kind of looser material. So you don't feel it. It's there more so just for looks. But again, everyone's gonna have their own opinion on that, so I can't really judge it in a positive or negative way based on, on the way that it feels. Um, as far as the uh, width of the shoe is concerned, they definitely don't feel like they're overly wide. Um, and a lot of that has to do with these straps, so you're not gonna get a ton of stretch through the midfoot because of these straps that simply are not going to give. But the forefoot and toe box area, because it is such a soft leather, because there is pretty much no reinforcement there, um, by way of stitching. I think you can expect a lot of stretch in that particular area of the shoe. But for the most part, if you do have really wide feet, these probably aren't gonna be the best option for you. And as far as sizing is concerned, uh, they run about a half size small. So instead of wearing my usual size nine US, I bumped it up to a 9.5 and the fit length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would personally recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. So, that is pretty much it guys for my review of the Puma Evo, not the Puma Evo, the Puma One 17.1. Again, if you're interested in the pair for yourself, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. You'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $200 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave it down below in the comments, and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.